Hi, doctor. This case is set up with the MLS preferences, uh, which does have a fair amount of differences to the GLR or the AACA essentially template. And there are some things that I do like about the uh, MLS template, such as the exaggeration or over treatment of uh, anterior intrusion to resolve a deep bite. We know that intrusion doesn't happen 100% clinically. So doing more and more and more or creating aligners that do more and more really is helpful there. In order to achieve the intrusion, having retention attachments throughout the premolars is really key. So that's great for the patient's left side. We're so close to the patient's right side. Changes that I would make to the MLS template would be to not rotate this premolar and prioritize a retention attachment. I also wouldn't do any rotation of the molars as it's really not critical to the final occlusion for this adult patient nor uh, nor the, the overall goal of the case. Uh, other change that I would make would be to the laterals. Uh, so in order to achieve intrusion, retention is absolutely paramount. So changing these lateral attachments to optimize retention or optimize my support attachments is very, very, very helpful to realistically get the intrusion of the central incisors. The central incisors are big rooted teeth that don't like to push up into maxillary bone. So having a attachment on the lateral that has a flat horizontal surface is going to make this upper intrusion more predictable. Now, I don't just want to change the attachments because these were placed by the software for a reason. So the root control attachment here is generally placed for mesiodistal angulation, which I can identify here, um, or if there's some significant translation. Let's absolutely eliminate the mesiodistal uh, me movement for the lateral. It's difficult to do, really not effective for the case, um, and uh, can be a very distracting movement. Dr. Galler calls it the death movement, and I absolutely agree. Now, this optimized attachment takes a little bit more investigation as to why that would have been planned. So let's take a look at the tooth movements table. So number seven is doing some angulation, not nearly as much as number 10. Um, it's doing some buccolingual movement and rotation. So this attachment is the number one choice of the software for lateral rotation. I don't find it's as effective and I've gotten some really good uh, rotation of laterals with the optimized retention attachment. Other big change that I would make would be to not delay the bite ramps. The MLS template preferences, I believe, uh, prefer the bite ramps to be at the end of the case with the premise that bite ramps are a negative patient experience. Myself, over 10 years using bite ramps, as well as so many people in the AACA community, find that patients actually really like bite ramps. They can act like a flat plane um, or act a like a deprogrammer, which can be more comfortable for the jaw joint. And with good compliance, any lisp that a patient may have with bite ramps goes away pretty quickly as long as the patient's wearing the aligners really well. So that being said, uh, doing the extrusion of the molars shouldn't be really necessary if the bite ramps are being used all the way through. Again, the extrusion of the premolars at the end of the case is to compensate for the high likelihood that the molars are going to passively intrude throughout treatment with the lack of bite ramps all the way through. So it's like, okay, we're not going to have bite ramps, but then we got to compensate, add more attachments, add more movements. So it's a little bit of chasing your tail, uh, in my opinion. I would say for this doctor that uh, prefers to use the MLS template, by all means, extrude the maxillary molars. It's only going to help with establishing a better solid final molar occlusion, but do add the bite ramps all the way through. It reduces complication, helps slightly with the anterior intrusion force by allowing the patient to uh, uh, add to that force by their own masticatory force. Uh, and, uh, 
um, can be a benefit throughout treatment. Uh, so how do we make these changes? We can write them to the CAD designers um, or we can do them with the 3D controls. I'll show some of the 3D controls quickly. So for example, this movement is what I want to get rid of or reduce all day long. Now it makes the lateral look a little bit, a little bit, you know, not perfect, but lateral, the shape of the lateral isn't perfect. So let's uh, create a shape, a better shape with restorative, which we are so good at as restorative dentists and eliminate difficult movements so we can really focus on the goal at hand. So then we make this retention, we make this retention. I had eliminated those mesiodistal death movements from the central incisors. So now we don't need those attachments, make one thing a little bit simpler. Uh, and then we can click on this tooth. We can press zero and enter to eliminate that rotation really doesn't make a big impact on the case. And if we can change this to a retention attachment, just focuses so much more on the anterior intrusion. And here we would just say, um, please add or keep uh, bite ramps throughout treatment plan starting at one. Uh, so I would do similar elimination of the rotation of the lower molars and then just know that this is not going to actually be a big, big, big anterior open bite. This is something to monitor and not all of the aligners may be needed. If there was 20 something aligners to start, but the anterior open bite is resolved within 15 aligners, then uh, the rest can be just examples that you use in your uh, in your treatment room to show more patients uh, this great treatment that we can do. Let me know if you have any other questions.